Okay, let's talk about this. Uh, there's an SDK test plus three tool. And um, you'll see that on this uh, QuickBooks desktop documentation. It goes through here, get the Intimate Developer Account, the, um, the Not for Resale copy. We went through the downloading the SDK, getting that installed. Let's talk a little bit about now the SDK test plus tool. It is very handy very nice it will save you a lot of time uh, especially getting started and then troubleshooting deeper problems later all right I have it already installed you can find it quickly just doing one of these numbers um, it's called that right there uh, even though it's uh, SDK test plus tool um, you can also just look in the yeah, you installed the Intuit SDK, so it will be here, Test Plus, right there, that one. And I'm just trying to think, why does it have the different name? Let me see what this one's got. I have it open right here. Um, but let me close it. So I'll make sure I give you the right location. And then you can just search for it. Um, so I'm in the into an SDK folder. Let's just click on this. Yeah, this is SDK test plus, but it's called whatever the QXML plus tool. So this is how this works uh, high level, and then we'll see some deeper things later. Now we can leave company file blank because we have QuickBooks desktop open here. Here we're going to need to fill that in. Okay. And it says here in the documentation, you can find a lot of queries by going to this location. I'm going to show you one I have open already. Let's go back to the, the tool. And the first thing you would do is you open the connection all right you can then 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 next you begin a session and we're going to talk about sessions when we get to the queue and as we get deeper into the interaction between the quickbooks web connector and your soap server we're going to talk about session tickets a little bit all right so now you f see this language sessions and uh, i'm going to browse here I, I just created a um, folder right here in documents called a QBXML. This is my folder, not the one that I just showed you there that um, Intuit has for, in the SDK. I'm going to grab this, open it. This is a mod request and let's go ahead and run it. So the way you do that is and you, you can see here you would leave these defaults here okay um, then you click this next okay processing complete it says and you need to view the output right here okay everything happened everything was fine it was an ad request um, all this stuff and it worked fine now I had a real uh, where it can be tricky, and I'll go into a detail later, but um, let me see here what I got. Okay, this is actually, okay, this is, I may turn this into an ad request. It was a mod request, but anyway, here's the file I have, and this is why I told you you need, I'm using Vim. You know, it's good to have a code editor you're, editor you're comfortable with, because you'll be pasting stuff in here, and um, when you're doing these, you do need real references. Like, this is a reference uh, I have in QuickBooks already. So it's, it's not, it will not work unless you have a real reference. Maelstrom bulk. Let's look at the two customers I made. So I just made these two customers actually using the sample app, which we'll get to in a little bit. So I made these two here. These two uh, were from, I think I wiped something or or whatever. 
And here I just made this invoice, I believe right here. Okay, um, the date, even though today's date's a little different, the date on the QBXML is 11.14. So know that too, when you're hacking around in the beginning. Um, I, so, so the point is I just using this tool, I just made this invoice, okay. That, and why that's pretty powerful is you can kind of quickly hack on your QB XML to get it right uh, without having to throw something in your queue from your app. You're going to see more of this later. That's why I'm going to keep this high level. But this gives you very close to the metal uh, where you're just hacking straight on um, the QB XML. And what I was mentioning too is like you need to actually have real references. You need a real customer reference. So if you have nothing in your company file, you need to at least make that. Also, the line items, um, you don't have to have item references in the line items, but um, if you're going to use things like quantity and rate, then you, then you do. Um, it is possible to do a line item with just a description, and um, but that's not usually the case you're going to be running up against. You're going to do an, a line item, doing an invoice line item with that's attached to a reference. In this case, I had to go and make a, um, where did I make the, uh, let's go over that to, um, is it, okay, yeah, item list. And I had to make a new item here. And those references need to be there. So if you're going to be making some th things very early on in a customer, you're going to be, oh, uh, well, I should say in this case, an invoice, a transaction that you have to have references. In this, in this case, for an invoice, we're going to be working with invoices. You need a customer reference. You need a line item reference. So this won't work. That's my point here. That This will not work unless you have those references. If you're doing a customer, you can just quickly hack that up. That has no references. Um, for making a basic customer. So that's a high level overview of the SDK plus. I'm going to be using it in, in a troubleshooting way when we get to that part of the training.